Hi, this is Dave, Feldrunning Guide. Welcome to another navigation task. This week we've got a route choice task. So what I'm asking is what's the quickest way of getting from A to B? So from the summit of Elidia Vach here to the foot of the crags here at B. So what is the best way? Um, what I'm going to talk about is the two obvious choices. So the, the first choice you might think is the direct line, which is going to be straight across, but down and then going up. So it's obviously short distance. Uh, and then the second main op uh, option would be to contour around here, adding more distance, but not having to climb steeply up this valley. So what I'll do is I'll talk about which of those routes would be the quickest uh, and then I'll come back and talk about which might be the easiest to navigate in poor visibility. Now one thing we've got to take into consideration is we're just looking at the map. We don't necessarily know what the terrain is like on the ground. So the map shows here that this is rocky or bouldery ground. but We don't know whether that's ankle breaking and horrible or whether there are little paths and trails to it and whether we could get through that. Um, and likewise, we don't know what the vegetation is like on these slopes here. So we'll set aside local knowledge uh, in this instance uh, and we'll just purely go on looking at the map. Obviously, people who might have a, a better idea of the terrain in that area might be saying, oh, you don't want to go that way because it's deep bracken or you might not want to go that way because it's really bouldery but we're just going to go um, based on what we can see on the map. So we're looking at that age-old question which is quicker the long way round or down and steeply up. Um, obviously it depends on your preferences and fitness but there are a few things that we can use to help us estimate that. So for walkers, there's something called, called Naismith's rule. Um, and he proposed that people would walk approximately five kilometers an hour. So that'd be 12 minutes per kilometer. So 12 minutes per one of these squares. Um, and then they need to add a minute for every 10 meters climbed. Uh, and that's useful on this map because these contours are in 10 meter intervals so you'd add a minute you just count the contour lines and add a minute for every one that you cross going uphill. Now obviously as runners we're going to be going quicker than Naismith suggested but it depends whether we're running or racing and even if we're racing is it a long race or is it a short race so let's estimate something like 10 kilometers an hour so that's imagine a pace you could do 10k in an hour which is six minutes per kilometer which is six minutes per grid square and we're also going to change the time for ascent slightly and rather than adding a minute for every 10 meters we'll add a minute for every 30 meters so for every three of these contours climbed so we can use those um, kind of little formulas to get an estimate of how long it's going to take but first of all, let's have a look at the uh, possible route options. And let's take the direct line first of all. So we want to minimise the height gain. So it might be that we um, contour slightly southeastwards off the shoulder of Lidavour and then drop steeply down the valley, looking to pick up this stream here and then straight up the other side there. So something pretty much like that um, purple line there. Now I'm using Anket mapping software here and I'm using the formula for Naismith at the moment. Uh, and we can see just down here that the distance for that purple route is just over two kilometers and the total ascent is 172 meters. And the estimated time is pretty much 41 minutes for that. So remember that's going at 12 minutes per kilometer and adding 
a minute for every 10 meters climbed. So that is the direct route. What about if we were to take the longer way around? Now, some people suggested we actually go up to the summit of Lidavala and then contour around, around, following this path, hit this boundary line and follow it in. So pretty safe route. Now, if we look at the statistics on that one, we can see that it's 4.2 kilometers. So that's over two kilometers more. And actually the ascent on this one is 190 meters because we're not saving any ascent because you're going up to the summit of Lidavala. And then from this point here, probably roughly at the 700 meter contour, we're going up and then up here and contouring along to 750 there. So we're actually adding height on that way, one, even though it's more gradual. So what the, um, the formula says on that is that, that that one is going to take us quite a lot more uh, time. One minute, uh, sorry, one hour and nine minutes. So significantly longer and actually more ascent. So it might be that there's a better, longer way around. What about something like that? So we don't um, take the, the high ground up over the summit, but we contour around the back. And then when we get to this point here, rather than following this path along there to the boundary line, we actually contour along here without gaining any more height and going in that way. So if we were to look at the statistics for that, then 3.9 kilometers, so about a kilometer longer and 93 meters of ascent. So still a fair amount of ascent on that. Uh, and that's actually taking 55 minutes. So regardless of um, the route, those three options on there, according to Naismith and walking, the fastest line is the direct down and up. So that is for walking, but what about if we're running? So now using the formula of six minutes per kilometer and adding a minute for every 30 meters climbed, we can see that the statistics for the direct route are, that brings that down to 17 and a half minutes. If we look at the direct line that goes over the top of the devour, then 31 minutes, but we'd notice that we're not really saving anything on that one because of the ascent. So option three, which is a longer way around, but still avoiding the ascent, then we can see that that is 26 minutes. So again, option one comes in at being the, the fastest, uh, whether we're walking or running. Now, if you look at it, what we can actually see is at first glance, you think, oh, that's really steep down and up the other side. But notice that the down is steeper and longer than the up. So if we were to cross at the 400 meter contour down here, then our destination or the, the point that we're aiming for at the bottom of that crag is probably about 580 meters. So this ascent here is 180 meters. Um, so it's not the, the huge drop off down here and then back up to regain this height again. So that's something that we need to think about. So in terms of um, which is the fastest, then it looks like the purple route wins, whether we're walking or running. But what about the ease of navigation? So if we look at the first route to start with, then basically to start with, we're just contouring around roughly southeastwards to the ridge here and then taking a direct line down down the valley bottom and we can aim straight for this stream junction here 
in good visibility you'd probably see that over the other side of the valley um, in bad visibility there's a danger that we get it wrong and we end up on this stream coming up here when we think we're on the more southerly one but if you look at the line we'd have to take if we were to take a line that brought us out here then we'd hopefully notice that we'd one gone through some rocky ground here two maybe seen the sheepfold here and three seen this boundary here even if we didn't see any of them somehow uh, and we got to the stream we could check because just notice the way that the the main river runs at this stream junction we've got a 90 degree bend there right on the junction um, whereas on this one let me just remove that um, purple line a second if we look at this stream junction then the stream shape is totally different isn't it we've not got that um, right angle bend that comes into the tributary so there's a few things that would prevent us from mistaking this one for this one and then it's just a sim simple case of going up the south bank of uh, the south side of the stream climbing 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 and hopefully see this um, crag feature as we approach it if we don't say even if it was at night or in really bad visibility then there's something that could tell us that we're nearly there I've just zoomed in a bit so we can see that but notice what happens when this stream finishes we get to this break of slope where the contours go from being steep to flattening out and we would know at that point that the stream is less than 100 meters just slightly below us and to our right um, so you could get very very close to it even in in the dark um, and not have to go off too far on a bearing looking for it failing that we've got this boundary line and if we could navigate to this distinct corner here then again the crag that we're looking for is ever so slightly in this case it'd be northwestwards and below us um, so we've got two attack points there that could take us in so that's the direct route so regardless of whether we go over the top of the devour or underneath then we're heading roughly eastwards over the summit would be straightforward navigationally because we just go off slightly north of east and down this ridge whereas contouring underneath again if we go um, slightly north of east we hit this steep ground that drops away down to the reservoir to the north um, and just contour along the top of that to then pick up the ridge here as we drop down slightly north of east um, and then get to this point here this is important because there is a path that goes uphill again here off the map we don't want to do that so we don't want to drop down and then climb again we want to drop down and then contour around and then contour all the way around the safe route takes the the, the blue line and this rises here remember this gives us that extra ascent so rising up from just above 700 meters here up to 760 in here and then along hit the boundary line and run along it and attack point as previous the slightly more direct route would be to follow this um, follow the contour from uh, roughly along the 700 meter line for a while and then as we cross this stream then we might gradually drop downhill um, in good visibility to see this boundary ahead of you and could aim for the corner again at our attack point even in bad visibility if we run along this contour if we've got the, the steepness of slope on one side and the boundary on the other that's going to funnel us in and use that corner as our attack point so both of those are fairly straightforward navigationally so quite a few things to think about in terms of which is the quickest way um, interesting to use a little bit of um, you know proven statistics as to work out which is going to be fastest rather than just say oh I'm not very good at uphill because um, if you think about it one of these routes was two kilometers longer so for walking that's an extra half an hour um, and it wasn't in fact it was the same amount 
even a little bit more ascent than um, the direct down and up the other side. So it's worth looking at the contours and, and maybe counting them and working it out a little bit more rather than just saying, oh, I'm, I'm going the long way around. So hope that was uh, useful and interesting. Um, you, you've obviously got your idea of what you do, but um, that's up to you. Anyway, thanks for watching and look out for next week's navigation task. Bye for now.